So that wall is very, very non, well, this is actually an exception. This wall is pretty much the same in all frequencies. But let's use, that's a bad example. Let's use that surface. This is a very good example. That surface up there might be extremely absorptive at 2,000 hertz. But at 60 hertz might not be particularly absorptive at all. Maybe it's 20% absorb absorptive at 60 hertz and 100% absorptive at 100 hertz. So we need a way to describe this. Well, the way we describe it is we kind of divide every surface, and that includes how it's mounted, by octaves, by octave band frequencies. That's usually enough. So now we can get eight numbers associated with that. 63, 125, 250, you know the eight octave bands. And now all of a sudden we kind of have a description of that surface. So if we take those numbers on a per surface basis and start plugging it into some modeling programs, we can get a feel for the absorption by frequency. The reciprocal of absorption is reflection. And now to answer your question, diffusion. Diffusion, I submit, is a third characteristic because it's a very specialized form of reflection. Diffusion is where energy hits a surface, and it is reflected, but it is not specularly reflected. Specularly reflected. Specular reflection is angle in, angle out, like a mirror. Sound hits this wall, the wave front of the sound, okay, and bounces off at the same angle. That's specular reflection. But suppose the energy were to hit the wall coming in, and now instead of all of it bouncing out in one direction, it got scattered. Maybe it got scattered equally. Maybe it got scattered in a radial pattern. Maybe it got only scattered horizontally, but didn't get scattered vertically. Now we're starting to talk about how it is diffused. And the description of those patterns is diffusion. Most people associate diffusion with, because it's been very popular over the last 20 years, you see it in the rear of a lot of studios, with QRD, quadratic residue diffusion. That's diffusion that's happening based on one set of mathematical formulas, QRD diffusion. But you could take a bunch of eggshells, you could take beach shells and glue them on this wall and you would have a scattering surface. It wouldn't be very predictable it probably wouldn't go down very much in frequency. It would only be scattering for high frequencies, but it would be scattering and it would be diffusive. What's the advantage? The advantage is that all the energy stays in the room. It doesn't get dead, but we don't have specular reflection. Specular reflection is the source of comb filtering, having a, having a pileup of sound in a specific location conflicting with the direct sound. So one solution is to absorb on a wall, Another solution is to scatter on a wall, and a third solution is to change the geometry of a wall. I can, of course, do that for floors and ceilings. Don't think, think of it as boundaries. Those are the only things we can do. So again, when we baffle the speaker, our goal is to keep the energy in the room. Last thing I want to do is make the room dead. I don't want to make the room dead. You've all been in rooms that are too dead. You move six inches, everything changes. When, when you see that happening, room's too dead. You've all seen those rooms. There's no way to do it. You're in a headphone, basically. Okay, so I'm going to keep the energy in the room, but I don't want it piling up in a listening position. I want to get it around the listening position, get to the back boundary. After all, we have boundaries. I mean, we, it's got to bounce off of something. So where's the, it's sooner or later, it's got to get to the back. And so when it gets to the back, that's why you see so much diffusion on the back. A more interesting argument is whether we should have one-dimensional diffusion or two-dimensional diffusion. Two-dimensional diffusion is like egg crate type of solution, and one-dimensional would be vertical. Vertical slots would cause horizontal. I think one-dimensional diffusion is much superior in the back wall, but that's another kind of debate. You'll see a lot of slides with essentially vertical wells in the back of the rooms. Those are, those are 1D diffusers, horizontally diffusing. So it's how we manipulate all of those surface qualities and the geometry of the room that truly gives us the impulse response for a particular send-receive diagram. That's a lot of words for what's happening on the inside of a room. You're going to see a lot of diffusion in the next hour, trust me. Okay? There's a picture of that studio. Oh, we're bouncing back. We'll, we'll get back on point. Okay? So there's going to be, there's going to, my point was there'll be more and more studios. Special purposed economics. Studios are going to be built with specific special business agendas. A church builds a studio, a radio station needs a studio. Okay, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to see more of them. 
less expensive to build, more efficient systems, equipment's getting cheaper, we're getting smarter, designing is actually getting easier, and construction costs are actually going down for studios. Studios cost less to build now per square foot in today's dollars than they did 30 years ago in those dollars, not relative dollars. It's one of the few moments in, 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 in industry where things actually have gone down in price. Electric Lady costs more to build per square foot than a studio of that professionalism now. We've just gotten better at it. More people have entered the field of prefabricated acoustical treatments. It's very exciting. Well, let's continue to take a look at private project studios, okay? But they're large, because some people want large studios. These are private studios. This is Timberland Studio. He wants a large studio, mainly because he needs it to get loud. Start to look at these studios. What's interesting is you'll see a lot of analog. Uh, that's, I don't want to get, I don't want to go down that road because that's a slippery curve. Um, but there's still quite a few people that like, like starting on analog. And I, I personally like the hybrid universe of analog and digital living together. I think there's a place for all of it. Um, so very, and see you'll notice that, see the speakers that are baffled. So they're not freestanding, they're baffled in the front wall. Okay, and then the characteristic um, <clears throat> angling of the, of the side walls and then a diffuser in the back. Okay, so this is, that's Tim's, this is Jay-Z studio, this is Rock the Mic in New York, it's just one of the rooms, I don't know which room it is, they're more or less identical. That right there is a low frequency membrane absorber, that is not an air conditioning grill. The universe of prefabricated low frequency membrane orders, uh, absorbers has exploded. These are, for me, the, the things really changed when you could buy prefabricated, thin, low frequency absorption. Because until that happened, the only way to really get low frequency absorption was to build very, very big traps with hanging baffles, which you've seen a lot of, and cover it with fabric, and that's okay, but they're expensive and time consuming and take a lot of space, or membrane absorbers that you had to build, which was kind of risky. But this is an object you can buy. It's a piece of metal, it's a metal box. But the metal has been tested in an impedance tube and it's specifically designed for a certain bandwidth, very, very low, like 125 and down. You want two of those on your ceiling in that room. Just for the, that, that's, the, that's the real solution, not that egg crate stuff. And that thing will just get, it just will go away. Okay, and I, we put it up there and we were about to cover it in fabric because our design, we just didn't want to see it. And the owner, actually Jay-Z's partner, came in and said, I like that, I like the way that looks. Let's just, let's just leave it. And I said, okay, it's okay with me. And it stayed. I like it because we, we can see it in the picture. We were, we were sort of gonna cover it up. And you'll see a lot of studios in the next few slides here with clouds. Basically, when you see these clouds, usually means there's something on top of it. The clouds are usually made out of fabric. And generally speaking, it's low frequency absorption on top. Okay, basically close to a surface. Because membrane absorbers want to be on a surface. They don't absorb sound like, uh, like foam does or, or fiberglass, uh, uh, sound going into air particles and changing it because of friction. They want to be close to a boundary where there's a high pressure and a low velocity. So you have to put them against a boundary, typically the ceiling, okay? Sometimes in a corner. This is Green Day Studio, same thing. Now here, the entire ceiling is a membrane absorber. Basically, here we calculated it. We actually calculated it and designed it, and it, that's based very, very thin wood. It's Home Depot stuff. So the whole ceiling is working as a membrane absorber to squash a mode that we calculated and predicted in the room. The rest is rather trivial. They liked all these curtains, so I said, okay, that's fine. They, they wanted curtains. They, they just sort of liked that look. All right, so we put them. There's a few too many, I think, but it doesn't really matter. The trick in this room was the low frequency. And uh, Johnny Resnick's studio for the Goo Goo Dolls. And yes, he does use all this equipment. I did not believe it, but apparently he does. And uh, that's the most equipment I ever put in a room, that's for sure. And um, this is an old church that we had designed 30 years ago. And he was a studio rat in the church. Now he came back and bought the church and the studio. And when we built it, the studio was very dead. It was a studio that basically was geared towards advertising music, kind of a dry room. They, they needed a lot of separation, and he wanted the room basically to record drums. 